As we look at this here this evening, uh, and I really need you to understand that the, 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 the importance, the, uh, the, the magnitude of what we find, it says, but if our gospel be hid, and you look at our gospel, uh, we're not talking about our gospel being what is uh, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're talking about our gospel being our testimony. We're talking about our gospel being our conversation, our gospel being our, uh, our willingness to live the Christian lifestyle. We're looking at our gospel as being our, our, our day-to-day walk, our fellowship, all these things are going to pertain into our gospel, our, our livelihood, our actions, all these things that it says if they be hid, they are hid under those that are lost. We're not hiding them from anyone else. As we talked this morning, we talked about how if we are ashamed of God before man and we're ashamed of Christ Jesus before man, he's going to be ashamed of us and uh, to his father in heaven. He's going to be ashamed of us for his angels that are in heaven. All these things are pertinent, but the thing about it is, is that only really uh, uh, what we think of it in our mind just by those verses that it affects us, but it it does not because if we attempt to hide our gospel the only people that it truly affects is the lost church that's who it hurts it's not really hurting us it is hurting the lost but if our gospel be hid it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. How many different ways uh, has the devil got these days to keep people from being able to see the true light of Christ Jesus? Now understand, I want, you, uh, I want you to physically do this with me this evening. I want you to take your hands and place them over your eyes just like this. No one make faces at me right now because I can't see you. I want you to do this and I want you to tell me if you can see light. I want you to tell me if you can see the light from this room. We cannot. We cannot do that. We can't see the light. Now understand that that is the lost people that have to go through the world this way. I need you to understand that your actions, your demeanor, the the way in which it is that you act, you are the light that is in this room because if you had to move around like this, we'd fall. We would get hurt. We would trip over the pews. We would hurt one another because we couldn't see where you were sitting. Amen? Amen? That's what the lost do as they go through life. They trip, they fall over one another just trying to to, to, to gain to the next step. They're, They're walking around blind. They don't care who they hurt. They don't care who they step on. But are we mingling in? Are we falling into those categories? Are we, are, are we trying to veil our gospel? Are we trying to veil our testimony? Are we trying to, to hide all these things and keep them only where our Christian friends can see it? Now let me make this, let, let me make, this make sense to you. There is nothing more than I would love is to present myself as a, as a nice Christian man unto you people. But quite frankly, your thoughts don't matter to me. Understand what it is I'm trying to tell you. I come to church on Sundays. I was called to preach the gospel. In your minds, you should all kind of automatically think that I'm a Christian man. But it's to the lost folk, that's who the people that needs to be understanding who it is and what we are. Now, you, you go out into your workplace, and I understand that uh, MD and Melvin no longer work, but you got Jason and Matt and Lucas that are back here. When they go forth into the world, their, their actions, their demeanor, their, 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 their personas ought to speak, hey, I am the church. Not only am I the church, I'm part of the body of Christ, but hey, I have a calling, I have a job. What we do, people ought to be able to see Christ. And we can't stress that enough because the lost are still dying. And they're still going to hell. All the great uh, uh, steps that we've made in, in, uh, uh, in science and in medicine and all the studies and things that we have. As far as we've went with electronics, we can do a lot with them now, right? Used to, you had to have some, some money when you was out on the road to drop in a, a phone booth to call somebody. Now you can call somebody wherever you got service. Used to, you had to be sitting at your, your computer to have internet. You can have internet wherever it is that you are now. You look at all the steps that we've made. But nothing has changed the fact that people are still dying and going to hell. Pneumonia might not kill you no more. A lot of diseases are curable. 
But unrepentant souls still die and go to hell. Now how would we feel if the person who created penicillin shoved it down in his pocket thought, I don't want nobody to know that. How many lives have been affected because somebody discovered penicillin? You think on that. Chew on that for a minute, church. How many lives have truly been affected because uh, uh, people started making Tylenol? Children's Tylenol. How many lives are affected because of Benadryl? What if all these people who found these things stuck it down in their pockets and didn't want nobody to know it? It's the same thing with us as Christian people, church. How many lives can truly be affected because you go forth into the world and live the gospel? But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. That's the important thing that we have to look at. The God, that is a little g, that means that is of the devil, those were things of, of Satan, but, if, uh, but in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. I want to read you something that really just hit me. Just That's why I about fell coming up here because I was reading this. But in the first psalm, in the first verse, it said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Blessed is the man who does not stand in the way of sinners. Preacher, I don't stand in the way of sinners. Preacher, I don't do that. But are we guilty of hiding our gospel because that's exactly what we're doing? Are we leading people astray because we hide our gospel? But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. It affects the lost. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds. I want you to notice the words that are used. What does the devil have to blind on you first? It's your eyes and your mind. Amen? The devil don't have free reign to your heart just yet. You understand that? You understand what the Bible is truly saying to you this evening? That the devil has to blind your mind. You have to be closed-minded. You ever heard that word being said? You hear it a lot if you watch the news about closed-minded people, people who don't want to be accepting to things that may be a, a radical ideas. Well, here's a radical idea. For you love your neighbor. If we're closed-minded to these things, then that's of the devil. The God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Well, we talked about this morning too. With Melvin Sunday School, we were talking about creation. How many, how many minds has the devil blinded just on creation? And we, we, we really talked on this before, but not in this, this, uh, this, this manner, this aspect. Talking about our gospel being hid. Now, you understand that in order for you to be saved from Genesis to Revelation, you have to believe everything in between. You, don't, you can't pick something that, well, I don't really know. You've got to believe everything that's in, there, uh, in between the, the, the two leather pieces on your Bible. So if the Bible says that whenever the, uh, uh, whenever the flood came and it, uh, for Noah and it, that the water rose, and I think it was three feet above the tallest mountain, I think it was three, it was three six or nine, it was somewhere in there. But when you read that the water was that high, three feet, I believe, above the tallest mountain, you have to believe that. Do you believe that? Okay, well, let's have a conversation out in society and people's talking about the ice age and the, the, the stone age and the prehistoric age and, and all these other kind of ages that you have. And they're wanting explanations for these things. Well, well, what about the dinosaurs dying off the earth? And well, what about this? And what about these things? And people's got an explanation for everything, don't they? You know what happened to them dinosaurs? There was a meteor. It came down and hit this big place on the earth and it caused this big dust storm and it took away all the oxygen and they died. 
Hey, I read a science book when I was little. That's what happened, but how did everything else survive? If you go forth and you speak that to someone, you just hid your gospel because you would refuse to give any glory unto Christ. You've let the devil blind your mind and your eyes where you can't see nothing in front of you. And if your gospel is hid, it is not hid to anybody other than the lost. Now I'm going to give you a true, what I believe is a true statement. So I'm going to give you my opinion that I believe is true. I honestly believe that every single born-again believer has an opportunity within their life, some on a daily basis, to reach the lost. I believe that in your years that you will walk this earth, you are going to encounter lost person after lost person after lost person, and it is your job to be the Bible. That is my belief. And if you hide your gospel, yeah, you may have a loss of reward, but they have a loss of eternity. Not loss of eternity because they're still going to live eternally, but they have a loss of eternity and glory. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. We hit on this this morning that the church is often referred to as the light. We went into Revelation as one, uh, chapter one, I don't remember if it was 17 or 20, but I'm a lot closer to what it was this morning. But we talked about the, the, the church uh, being the seven stars and the seven candlesticks, and that was the... Uh, the, the, the seven stars of the seven angels of the churches and the candlesticks were, the, uh, were representing the seven churches. They were the light. That's, that's what I'm wanting you to, to grasp hold of here tonight, that the church is referred to as being the light. How dark are we? I put in new lights in my house and they got a little dimmer switch on them and I can make them as bright and as dim as I want to make them. I want you to understand that you have the very same switch within your, within your body. You can make the light as bright or as dim as you choose to make it. But I want you to understand this. I don't control Mindy's light. I don't control Melvin's. I don't control Vin D's. I don't control Jamie's. And I don't control Lucas's. I can't make your light brighter. I understand that I'm the preacher, but I can't make you go forth into the world and to preach and to teach all nations as Jesus commanded. I can't make your light shine, but you can. You have the control of that. You can allow that to shine. Let the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, if you get into, to, to the, I believe it's in the book of Isaiah, and you start getting into the prophetic scripture, and you'll find out that, that, that God was going to send a light into the Gentiles. Hallelujah, because we're the Gentiles. He sent the light to you and I. And you know what he says? In a, uh, if you flip over and you'll find it in uh, probably all four of the Gospels, but we're going to look right over here in the fifth chapter of the book of Matthew. It says, ye, ye. So Jesus is talking to those that are in front of him at this moment. He's not only talking to 12 of his disciples. He is talking to all of us here. Understand who is the audience. He is talking to you and I. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. You know, some people's fascinated with lighthouses. They, they really are. I know where we went on vacation the last uh, few years. Many's wanting to go see the lighthouse that's over there in, uh, um, where's it we go? Hilton Head, Hilton Head Island. That's where she wanted to go see the lighthouse. I know me and Mama and some of them went seen it. Minnie's wanted to go see it. We ain't never went. She wants to see that lighthouse. You know what the lighthouse is there for? Yeah, that way when a ship is coming around the bend right there, they can see the lighthouse and they can say, oh, well, there's land there. I might ought to go this way. It allows them to steer and to navigate. Wow. Mind-blowing, right? That light allows other folks to know where to go. You know, bugs would make great Christians. Because they're annoying, right? No. 
You ever been out on something? What? Fishing. Let me give you a fishing story. My former sergeant, John Swift, used to sit right up here in the front. Me and him and Chris Gore go fishing. And John and Mindy was a lot alike. They could get eat up by bugs in sub-zero weather. I don't know how they can do it, but they can. But me and John fished on the back of the boat. Anybody say, went night fishing, you know what's on the back of the boat? There's a little light that's back there. You know what you can't do? You can't turn that light off. Do you know what happens to every bug and mosquito around the lake? They go to that light. And poor John's back here fishing. He can't even cast his pole because he's got so much off on his hands. I mean, he is like greased up and shining. I'm not lying. You can call him and ask him. But every bug around the lake comes to that light. And it shines forever. There was a spot we used to fish just off of Lilydale that you could almost look clean back up into where you're going to cut and go back up into uh, to Eagle Creek. There's a long stretch of lake right there and you can be that far apart and you can see the other boat just as plain as day because of that light. Pitch black. Can't see nothing out on the water, but you can see those lights. Why is that important? Because church, we are that light. The lost people ought to be the mosquitoes and they ought to be able to see us and flock unto us. They ought to go forth and they ought to be able to say there's a church that is set right there, right off a of dog walk, right on Nard Road, right on this little hill that we are on. They ought to be able to see that church and know that there's a church and know that there's a place that they can go to for safety, for support, for comfort, for uplifting, for lack of judgment. They ought to be able to see a place that they can go and be accepted no matter what. Because we, church, are the light of the world. A city that is set at home. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. What did it, did it just say? Not hide your gospel? Did it say, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and do what? And glorify your Father which is in heaven. It doesn't say do your good works so people can glorify you. It says to show them your good works so they can glorify your Father which is in heaven. But if they don't know who and why and what you're doing, who are they going to give glory to? If they give it to anybody, they'd give it to you, but odds are they're not really going to like you. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God. Now we're going to bring full circle back to something that we've been really speaking of and made mention for the last several months. When someone looks at you, they ought to be able to see God. When someone looks at you, they ought to be able to see Christ. If someone wants to know what Christ really looks like, they ought to be able to look at you. Because the Bible says that we are made in God's image, does it not? So really and truly, God looks like each and every one of us. For we preach not ourselves. How often do we preach ourselves, church? Stay with me. Now, no, nobody run off in your mind and start thinking about Monday yet. It's going to be a cold start to your Monday. I can already tell you what it's going to be. So let's just keep focusing on Sunday night right now, shall we? How many of us truly preach ourselves and not preach God? For we preach not ourselves. And it's a good thing because if you flip over with me to the book of Romans, if you come right down past the Roman road right there and you get into the chapter 10 and the 14th verses, how then shall they call upon him who they have not believed? How shall they believe on him who they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Well, preacher, that sounds to me like that's your burden. Well, read on, church. And how shall they preach except they be sent? And I'm pretty sure if we go back into Matthew, we uncovered that this morning we've already been sent. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. 
but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who hath believed our report? Think about it is, church. You're not going to win everybody over to Christ. But you have to take faith knowing that God said his word will not return unto him void. You may, you may just plant the seed for years and years and years and years and someone else who has never done this before may walk up and immediately reap. Good for them. But verse 17 then, so faith cometh by hearing. And if you get into the book of Ephesians and in chapter 2, it says that we are saved by grace through faith. So you cannot be saved unless you have faith. And we don't establish that the faith was from cover to cover, not just a few of the things in between. It says, so then faith cometh by hearing, by hearing the word of God. It does not say by the word of you. Because if you flip back over here, it says we preach not ourselves. We get this confused. Because I've said it this way. Well, all I had to do was this. All I had to do was tell mama to turn the car around on a Wednesday night and take me back to church. That's what I needed to do to be saved. And all I had to do was go into the little back room back there at Allen's Baptist Church where Brother John Albright was sitting. And all I had to do was talk to him. And then all I had to do was uh, 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 say a prayer. That's all I had to do. And what are you thinking? Well, what do I have to do? What do I have to do? Then you know what I just preached? I just preached myself into that person. It is that easy to get yourself in the way of someone else's salvation because you begin planning in your mind, well, well, if that's what he had to do, what do I have to do? We can say the exact same thing and leave I out of it. All we have to do is call upon the name of the Lord. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. All we have to do is preach Jesus and be at the service of our brother and sisters. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, you understand that? Because God said, let there be light, and there was light. You understand that Jesus said essentially the same thing to you and I. He said, hey, we're the light of the world. We're a city set on a hill, did he not? Did we not just read that from the book of Matthew? So when he said, uh, let there be light, he means let there be light, not just a, a, you know, a flicker here and there. Let there be light, and the light has to come from within. Your light that shines has to come from here. Because I can think from right up here many ways to let my light shine. You start thinking. Well, I could do this. I could do that. What else could I do? You could read your Bible more because you figure out that you can do nothing unless you are rooted in Christ Jesus. Those are his words, not mine, so you don't have to get mad at me. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our own hearts. That light is there, saved person. That light was put within you. Amen. Many of us from a very young age, we sung a song that says, This little light of mine. And we hold up our little thumbs, and some of us are nice enough to let our little thumbs flicker. But as you go on, it says, I'm not going to hide it under a bushel. And we're not going to let Satan blow it out. And in the end, we're, uh, you know, it's shining bright till Jesus comes. Those kids are preaching a sermon unto us adults. Because that is not a song that kids sing. That is a life that Christians live. Totally different things. But the light was put within our hearts. We know what to do. 
So if you don't want to hide your gospel from the lost, all you have to do is live for Christ. Because as we talked last week and the week before, and quite possibly even the week before that, for, for, for us to live is Christ and to die is gain. Because greater is he that is within you than he that is within the world. It says within you, church. It don't say greater is he that is amongst you. It says he that is in you. But that uh, uh, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge. How much light do we have here? If you had enough knowledge to be saved, you have enough knowledge to lead another to Christ. But you have to build upon that. Verse 7. You look at it and you think that there's no real importance to verse 7. It's talking about the earth and vessels. We have this power that is within it. And, uh, uh, you know, it's just uh, but because it's talking about th th this mortal body that we have and all that power is put in it. Well, it is put in this mortal body. And we, as Christian people, still have mortal bodies because that way they can know that it is almighty power of God and not man. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power of God the, uh, of the power may be of God and not of us. It reiterates what it was said earlier and it says it again. That we are not here to preach ourselves. We are not here to speak self. But we are here to preach God Almighty. But it says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. This ain't something that you can keep from your neighbor. True repentance brings joy. If you read and you study that joy, that is joy that cannot be contained. You can get that from the book of the Psalms. You just read through there. You will find out that that's joy that you can't contain. It's joy that's going to come out. It's joy that's going to shine forth. You can find out that true repentance is not uh, going to be just, yeah, I'll live different around you folks. But it is a true change. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry. Therefore, seeing that we have a job to do. It's not just a, if you don't care, if you ain't busy. If you have time, it is a task that is given to you that you must and you shall accomplish. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, church, it is time for the church to shine out into the darkness. I mean, the world's really trying to make it easy on us because it can't get much darker out there. I'm not talking, you know, uh, from a time matter and the sun going down. I'm meaning uh, that the time is, is right. You know, the love of the many has already waxed cold. People are, are giving themselves over to teachers having itching ears just wanting to hear what it is that they want to hear. People are already trying to do things by works and how it is that they want to do it. The time is right for you to shine. It can't be any easier. All you got to do is take your lamp up from underneath your bushel. Because you can always go back and you can read about the wise and the foolish virgins. Those that had a oil in their lamp and those that did not. And when the time came that the... Uh, uh, the, 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 they needed to run out and to see who was there. Some of them couldn't see where they was going, could they? I'm giving you very much a condensed, paraphrased version right there. But some of them had some oil so they could light their lamp and they could see in front of them, could they not? Some of them could not. Make sure you got oil in your lamps. Amen? Let's see everybody standing together here, Sydney.